Hey everybody, Grandmaster Ben Feingold here at the best chess center in the world, the Chess Club and Scholastic Center of Atlanta. Um, we're actually open now, and usually people don't start coming in for about 20 minutes because of traffic in Atlanta, and we have a lecture tonight at 7. I'm doing an endgame lecture, um, and we just had a chess camp today. What? Oh. Um, so I got here at before 8 a.m., and it's 6 p.m. now approximately. And about 10 minutes ago, the last kids just left. So that was fun. We have uh, 20 kids, and um, yeah. Anyway, so I thought I'd make my video now that there's, we're not so busy um, and everybody left. Uh, I wasn't sure what to make a video on. I'm definitely not going to do an endgame video because I'm doing an endgame lecture tonight. So I decided to go back in the day and find some game I played I like. And um, actually, I made a video about the final position, I mean, the final tactical sequence of this game, but I don't think I've actually just showed the whole game. Maybe I have, but I don't know. Probably I made a video about it a few years ago. So I'm black, and this is the World Chess Festival, which was in St. John, New Brunswick, um, in, uh, in Canada, in 1988, I think February. And I was about 2380 FIDE, maybe, and I was a FIDE master. No, I am norms. I was 18 years old. That's right. And um, it's funny because um, at this tournament, my life sort of changed. I, I met someone, and uh, and then four months later, I moved to Europe. So that was an interesting turn of events. Anyway, uh, I guess the one funny thing about this game, not that it's about the game, was my opponent's name is Fabio Larota, and he's a grandmaster. A grandmaster. He's a FIDE master from Colombia. And um, well, actually, he moved to the U.S. I think he lives in Florida. I'm not sure. And um, I think he, I played him in the U.S. Championship, actually, about 12 years ago, something like that. Um, of course, this game is 30 years ago. Anyway, um, what's funny about this game is, uh, with Fabio LaRota, is a friend of mine, Fred Lindsay, who was at the World Chess Festival also, um, we had a mutual friend, um, I think it was Gonzalez, but I can't remember his first name. I want to say Jorge Gonzalez, but I don't think that's right. But anyway, he was talking to him and he said, hey, your, your country, they're both from Colombia. And he said, hey, your countryman, you know, Fabio Larota, that's an unusual name. Does that mean anything? And then he said, yes, Fabio Larota, Fabio Larota. And that was an unusual answer. So you're sort of like making fun of the guy's name like we would, even though they're from the same country. Um, okay, so I had the black pieces, and again, I wasn't such a strong player. Not that I am now, but probably better now than I was then. Okay, and we played the Carol Khan, which I still play occasionally. And my opponent played the advanced variation, which is probably the variation I least like facing. Bishop f5, I've also played c5, h4. Now, the main, 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 main lines from the 60s, 70s, and 80s was playing knight c3, um, and then and then playing g4, and I just, I don't like nothing, even though it's like the main line. Um, but most people just play weird against me, so I don't have to know anything. H4 is okay. And basically, there's an argument today about whether you should play h5 or h6 with black. Um, I stick with what I did. And the main, main, main idea is if black plays a normal move like e6, then his bishop is trapped, and you can't get out. Um, if you go to e4, there's f3, and you can lose your bishop. Okay. So, all right, so I played h5. I tried to play h5. I guess I didn't play h5. h5. Yes, I did it. What a hero. Okay. And... Okay, h5 is good because your opponent can't push all their pawns. You stop g4. It's bad because you might lose your h pawn. Yeah, the truth hurts. I don't really mind losing my h pawn because then his h4 pawn is weak. So I don't know. I like h5 because it stops white from you know, pushing his pawns up. Okay, knight e2 with the obvious idea of knight g3, which is what happened. And he's attacking my pawn a lot on h5. I got to give it to him. And I attack in the center. Um, so I'm going to keep hammering on d4. And maybe he'll win my h5 pawn, and he can figure out where to castle. Okay, he played c3, knight c6, bishop b3. He decided not to take my h pawn because his d pawn is so weak. 
queen b6, attacking his b-pawn, queen b3. So queen b3, well, if you assume that white hasn't made a mistake already, I'm not sure if I should assume that, queen b3 is basically giving up. Um, he's not going to win my h-pawn, and in almost any French defense, Carol Kahn advance, this looks like a French defense advance except the bishop on g6. Uh, Endgame is almost always favor black because uh, the problem with black's position is white has more space and sometimes black's king gets in trouble, whereas in the end game the d4 pawn can become weak because no white pawn can protect the d4 pawn. The c pawn has gone and the e pawn is past d3. So endgames normally favor black, so I'm really happy when I see queen b3 when my opponent's trying to checkmate me. When they play the advanced variation with e5 and they play h4, you're not worried about an endgame. Um, well, I mean, if he plays queen d2, I guess I take the knight and then I'm threatening bishop b4, and you can't play knight c3, so I just can't do that. So I'm not really sure what to suggest. Maybe bishop e3 was a bad move. Okay, so queen b3 was played, and I played knight h6. I don't want to trade queens. I want him to trade queens, so I get the open a file. And I want my knight to go to g4, f5. So I'm not really worried about my h-pawn, because once I play knight f5, he's going to lose his h-pawn, I think. So he traded queens, which I liked. My rook on the a file is open. Knight c3 seems normal. Knight f5 seems normal. We traded. And this is just very pleasant for black because it's sort of like an advanced French where my bishop got out and it's an end game. So I have all kinds of advantages. And I don't even see what white's plan is. I mean, if you made a lot of moves for white, I'm not sure what they would be. Uh, me, it's easy. I'm going to play on the queen side. Uh, bishop b4, knight b4, knight a5, uh, attack the d4 pawn. So I'm pretty happy here. Okay, king d2. I guess there's no real reason to castle for white. The king on d2 protects some important squares. King d7, f3, for play f3. Not a big fan of f3. Bishop b4, bishop to d3. And obviously that's a concession for white to trade the white squared bishops because his white squared bishop is great and um, has pawns in the center on dark squares. And Another problem with trading the white square bishops from white's point of view is he's giving up the c4 square. So if I can play knight a5 to c4, sometimes he can take it, but okay, not now. Okay, so I took the knight, which was a positional move, probably one of the best moves of the game. Now I took with a king, which is tactically incorrect. Strategically incorrect is taking with a pawn, because once we trade bishops and I put my knight on c4, I mean, white can't do anything. White has no plan, and black has a knight on c4 the rest of the game, and he has an isolated a-pawn. So a very simple plan is to do, is put the knight on c4 and get my other rook over to the a-file by doubling rooks and attack the a-pawn, and put my rook on a3 maybe to try to push my b-pawn. And again, it's just very pleasant for black. It's a good knight against a bad bishop. So strategically, king takes is correct, but um, yeah... Hey, we have a customer. Hey, I'm making a video right now. Live, you're on the video now. Am I really? Yeah, it's Josh. Okay, and probably Christy. All right, good. If it wasn't Christy, I would have had to. You know, yeah. Hey, I'm making a video right now. This will be on the internet soon. Yeah. You guys could be in the video if you want. Sweet. This It's Josh and Christy. They're the best chess players in this building who are not me. <laughs> yeah, the truth hurts. This is a game I played in 1988. Okay, wow. yeah. Okay. So, okay, now normally in the end game you want to move your king up, but okay, I got some pieces near the king. So I played rook c8 with obvious threats, knight anywhere. Rawr! And he played bishop b5, pinning my knight. Now I can't move my knight, unless I was Magnus Carlsen and Arkiev. Then I could I put both kings in check and nobody would care. Do you guys understand that joke? I think that's happened before. It happened like four days ago. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I don't want his bishop on b5, so Josh and Christy will explain how I got rid of it. How did I get rid of that bishop? You played rook to a5. I did, rook to a5. And he, they haven't seen the game, I guarantee it. Right? No. Okay. And then he defended his bishop. Okay. By backing it up. Backed to... up. 
Well, he attacked, he defended it. He protected it. Now, there's beginners here. How do you protect his bishop so I can't take it? How do you save it? <coughs> exactly. Yeah. Let me clear my throat. Da, 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 da. Okay, <laughs> so he played a4, obviously, frankly. And now I did move my knight because I'm, oh, I wasn't a grand minister then, I was a fide master. Okay, so how did I break the pin so his bishop wasn't pinning my knight? You snapped the bishop. I snapped the bishop. Bam! And I've made many lectures on exchange sacrifices because those are good. Okay, and he took, and now this was the most brilliant move of the game. You should pause your video and try to figure it out. If you've seen the video before, you have a chance. Not much, but I think you can do it. So what's the winning move for black? Pause your video and figure it out. And then when you're done pausing and you figured it out, I'll show you why you were wrong. Okay, welcome back. And what's the correct answer? 95 check. Oh, he's so close. Should we give him a parting gift? How about a used iPad? Done. Okay, done. All right. How about this invitation to a party that already happened? Done. All right, to a children's party. Okay. Even, even better. Okay, <laughs> 95 is okay and black is fine. But much stronger, drum roll, is knight takes d4. Oh, snap. On e4. Yeah. So if he takes it, then checkmate gives black the advantage. <laughs> okay. I would say so. And if you don't take it, that's even worse. Okay, because I'm checking you, and you, you, you got nothing. You're all talking a badge. Horrible. So king b4 is another legal move. Then I would check. You would make a legal move. And then I would go here, and you'd be really unhappy. Probably start attack your king and your rook and your bishop. So he didn't do that. He went back, French style, even though he was Colombian. He played king d2. Okay, now I have many good moves. I played the best one. Now he's in check and his rook is attacked. So his, since his rook is defending his rook, that means going to the back rank would block the defense. So he played king e2. That way if I take his rook, he takes my knight. Right. So I played the intermezzo. Rook c2. Rook c2 check. Now if he goes to the back rank, I take his rook and he resigns. So he blocked. I took and he went here. Now I have two pieces for a rook. Also, he's threatening to castle. That's what we call a joke. Okay. <laughs> also, I'm going to castle because I'm going to promote to a rook. Okay. Now if I take his rook, he takes my rook. So I played rook b2. Now I'm attacking his rook. If he moves his rook vertical... Then rook b1 check wins his other rook. So he must play. Rook to d. Rook to d1, and the rook is trapped. Bam! Recommended by Emerald. Yeah. As you can see, I played better than my opponent. Yeah, because I took everything. Yeah, and now he did what everybody does. Resigned. He resigned, except in our chess camp. Yeah, Josh was teaching our chess camp, but yeah, the kids don't resign. They just lose. And that was the game against Fabio La, Fabio La Rota, Fabio La Rota, from Colombia, but now living in the U.S. And no connotations there. Okay, and I used to live in Missouri. They have a Colombian Missouri, right? And they have a university there. See, can I say what I want to say? I'll pass over that. I won't make any drug references. I won't compare, like, the country of Colombia to a university town in Missouri because, you know, it's unclear. Yeah. All right, and don't forget it. There's also Columbia, South Carolina. Yeah, did you know that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's scary, isn't it? Are you from there? No. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. Okay. So that was my video. And these people came here to loan me money. So send money. Donate. Donate money. The more you pay. The more you learn. The more you learn. See, I brainwash. I mean, they know what's, what's true. <laughs> yeah. And get a copy of my book, Brainwash Everybody Like a Grandmaster. It's a, it's a top seller. And like and subscribe. YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. What's the other one? Twitter. Twitter, Snapchat. and any, no, I don't do any Snapchat, oh. but any of the other stuff, I'm not old enough for that, or I'm too old. You're too old. Any other stuff, do that. Watch my videos. Do as I say. Rawr. What's that? You're too old for Twitter. That's true, but it's a business account. So, okay. Yeah. Also, you guys should know about that, so it's a none of your business account. Okay. See you guys tomorrow. Half point by and full point by. Say bye, guys. Bye. bye.